Good evening, Theo Trade. This is Corey Rosenblum, and you're watching the Theo Notley video for the 19th of October here in 2021. First up on the list is Netflix, which just reported earnings just a moment ago. And we had, this is our daily chart of Netflix, which is breaking out or has broken out of a trading range. And that continues to make higher highs, higher lows, trending to the upside. And more importantly, we had earnings. So if you're ever curious about what a stock does for earnings, if you have butterflies or any other spreads or positions on, and you want to see in the Thinkorswim platform what their earnings were, a lot of ways you can do that is just one, go to any particular time frame. This is just a one minute chart, and it does have overnight session hours turned on. And that will be done right here. So on the equities tab, just make sure we look at extended hours, and that way you can see exactly what the stock or price or market is doing. Other than that, we can open up a window. We'll just look at a news event. Just go down to the live news and then type in the symbol. So Netflix, this can be done with any particular stock or ETF or anything else in the market. And on Netflix, we can see, I won't go through them just for the time sake of the video, but their earnings were reported and listed. And you can read all about it right there or take a look at the analyze tab and we'll go into the earnings for Netflix. And that's gonna be the big news of tomorrow. So here we are looking into the future of Netflix and you can always check, double check, uh, when the earnings are reported or released, that's today, they haven't done that at the time of the video. So that will be by the time you watch the video or in the morning, you should be able to know on this updated panel what the earnings were and the Wall Street consensus estimate and whether they beat the street or not. So that's the main ideas about looking at earnings and of course how the implied volatility plays after the earnings announcement. So that is where we are. It is at the moment, at the time of the video, not much has changed. Netflix had a spike to the upside. They reported $3.19 per share, but the price has come back to where it closed the session. So we'll pick up right there. Outside of Netflix, just quickly, the stocks in the S&P 100 that had earnings today, and they're before the bell, so they are complete at the moment, was Bank of New York Mellon, gapped down, closed the session relatively unchanged. Procter & Gamble traded down from its range. Similarly, had earnings to the downside, or at least the stock went to the downside. Philip Morris, not a big move, but necessarily, that is where the stock is closing back at the bottom of its trading range. And finally, Johnson & Johnson had a bullish bounce off of support and a breakout in a trend day on the intraday chart. Again, Netflix will report, or his reported, and you'll see that in Wednesday's session. Also in Wednesday's session, we'll have Abbott Labs. We'll actually detach this and look exactly where the earnings will be. And again, this is the days till earnings column and you can get this here at Theotrade. So it is just a watch list tool and just put this into the customize and it's just a day store earnings. Take everything else off and what it says is when it's a one, that means tomorrow at the opening bell or before the opening bell and five or 1.5 means after the bell. Look at what's coming up, Tesla. So Tesla reports earnings tomorrow as does Kinder Morgan an IBM after the bell. But before the bell is Abbott Laboratories, Biogen, Verizon, and Next Era Energy. So those are on the docket for earnings in the next session or so. And beyond that, we have other stocks in place. So it is earnings season. It's the earlier part as earnings are being released and the market is responding, at least at this point, very positively. And we're having not an all-time high we're having a push back toward those S&P highs. And that's about 15 or 4,500 and, well, about 50. So 4,550, that's your futures in the SPX. That's about the same level. And we're seeing an impulsive bounce, putting that into context that it's a very strong rally off of our breakdown point. But this is similar to where we saw, as discussed, maybe March of 2021 or a similar type of breakdown and under those averages, under support levels, and then all of a sudden straight back to the high and even beyond that. 
that's at risk to the upside of the bear or short or hedged side of the market is that we just push one more time and the other examples being three, four, five, six times earlier in 2021 just to look at one year. And as this uptrend, it's just a higher high, higher low, higher high, higher low. And that structure at the moment continues as the market closes right now just above 45.11, which is a key level that we're going to be watching in tomorrow's session. So futures at the moment are a little positive after the close. Again, we'll have earnings aplenty in stocks and Netflix will be the focal point most likely. And that will tie directly into the NASDAQ and how that plays into tomorrow's session and beyond. And that's been a strong rally off of support bounce lows and upwards to a much faster impulsive move. And again, this is not the first time we've seen this. It doesn't mean it's fun. doesn't mean it's the easiest thing in the world. It is not. It's about risk mitigation and extended rallies. And similar times have been earlier in 2021, just going back just just this year alone. In the Dow, many futures, its trading range continued with the Dow just shy of those all-time highs. And I still classi classify or categorize the Dow as a trading range with highs established about 35,000 and lows about 34,000 or 33,500. That is also true in the Russell. So going forward, put your trades, put your swing trades or any option positions or sold premium, long or short delta, or positive or negative delta, in the context of where you are trading in your market or your stock. So for the Russell, that is continued to be a long term, really through the bulk of 2021, as a sideways trading range. And that is in play again, 2125 and about 2325. And we've pushed up from the middle of the middle or the heart of that trading range or volatility box, sideways action. That is also true in the IWM. And outside the earnings, outside the market itself, we want to take a look quickly at the bond market. This is TLT. We can see that also with ZN. And ZN has made a new 52-week low. It's a new low for 2021. And the equity market is just scratching the surface or just very close to its all-time high. So those are things we're going to be continue, continuously watching in the background with trades or hedges, what the bond market does is it pushes lows with the equity market pushing highs. And the other way to look at this is through treasury yields, which can be TNX. TNX is our 10 year treasury yield. The way to look at these numbers are one or 10 is actually 1.0. So 1.0 is 10, just put a period between those. And that is your rate. So roughly 2%, 1%, and we are pushing up back toward those highs. A little bit of a discontinuation or at least a disconnection in treasury yields and the equities, meaning generally, not always, but generally, that the yields follow price, or at least the yields trade with the equity prices, meaning they were trending up. Again, the dis this disconnection or the break apart in the correlation took place mid-2021 when the equity market pushed up and yields went down. But that correlation is being reestablished, at least in the short term. We don't want these yields to push up that rapidly, similar to where we saw in earlier 2021, because that causes dis disruptions in the broader economy. But this is something to watch as the yields push very strongly up. And at the same time, bonds, which is 30 year bonds and our 10 year notes those are making new lows. So keep these in mind as you assess earnings, as you position, reposition, and hedge in your portfolio. And a quick note before we conclude the video and get ready for more earnings to come up this week, we'll take a look at our scan and some of the stocks making new 52-week highs in the S&P 500 include, as sorted by market cap, 42 of those stocks. And the biggest ones are Microsoft, Home Depot, Salesforce, Pepsi, Accenture, Lowe's, and others. Just a quick look at two of those. Microsoft is a leading technology name, 
and it is making new highs, outperforming the NASDAQ at the moment, at least making higher highs. And we'll look just at Home Depot, which is a component, and it also is keeping this bullish or this uptrend, really not clean, but still higher highs, higher lows. And Home Depot is pushed to a new high. And we'll look at Salesforce.com, just a quick note, and finishing up with PepsiCo. Not the number one stock you think about when actively trading or high beta names, but nonetheless, PepsiCo PEP is at new 52 week highs. We always say, but we are serious about being careful, cautious, hedged, and protected in your portfolio, in your short term trades, swing trades, or any premium sold, purchased, hedges, and the like. So always be careful and safe. This is Corey Rosenblum with tonight's Theo video update for October 19, 2021.